and welcome to This Is Austin. Intel yes. and AMD have a lot to worry about right now. Yes. Why is that? Because the Apple M1 processors have had now quite a while to show off just how powerful they are, but that's just the beginning. Because around the corner, we have another set of even more powerful chips. The M1X, perhaps? The M2? We the don't know M the name of it yet. One triple X? It's the X is where XL. it's like, you know, we 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 for the longest time we weren't sure how the Apple Silicon chips were gonna do. Yeah. In fact, we made a video that like you probably shouldn't get a MacBook this year. We were wrong. Because yeah, we were. Because we were right. they're probably they were probably gonna be bad. What did we say? We well we said that I you should wait. We said. You said we said you should wait. Oh, and I watch your videos. And then we speculated that you probably shouldn't, even if you wait, you probably should wait even longer because the first gen ones will be buggy or, you know, not great, whatever. That doesn't sound like something I would say. I, I don't it definitely sounds like something I said. I don't think I said it. I said it. Jimmy's but definitely not gonna cut to a clip of me saying that exact thing right now to make me look dumb. You may want to hold off, but I think the only reason to hold off is to see what that M1X chip looks like. Yeah. Look, the Apple M1 Max are a clear win. Yeah, it right? surprised everyone. Like, and it shouldn't have in some ways, because when you look at what that M1 chip is, it's basically what you've already seen on the iPad, right? It's a souped up version of that. They've certainly made some changes, but what they've done between the hardware and the software is really incredible, right? I now have a 13 inch MacBook, which is essentially as powerful as my old 16 inch MacBook, but it is thinner, it is lighter, and it is essentially silent. That is a huge, huge win. And it has like twice the battery life. Yes. But that's just the beginning because these only, we only have a few M1 Max available. We have the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13. We don't have the 16 inch yeah. MacBook, iMacs, any of the higher end systems like that Mac Pro, which is gonna have 700 cores. Not quite 700 cores. 150 so cores. The, the current models that we have available are all using pretty much the same exact chip. Uh, the, the Air is slightly, uh, one of the cores is deactivated of for the, the GPU. GPU. Yeah. So, other than that, they're pretty they're pretty similar, and so what the reports are saying with the M uh, the M1X is that there's going to be maybe three variants of it, where it's a 12 core, a 16 core, and a 24 core. Are those 28? 28 core? I, I don't know. A ton of cores. So essentially, what they're going to do is they have the four efficiency cores, which are going to be standard across the board. Yeah. You don't need more than four efficiency cores. You want those high power cores. Right. So essentially, they're going to load it up and make a mega chip, which I would assume also either has a huge graphics card built in, or you have an external GPU for something like the Mac Pro. Yeah, because currently you cannot use an external GPU with any of the, the current M1 stuff. Uh, there's just not enough PCI lanes available with that current chip. The The chip is probably still gonna be, again, the same chip and just having cores activated well, or, or not activated according to, to some of the yeah, rumors. Yeah, so there's a lot to break down yeah. here. So we wanna put our technical nerd hats on for a second. Traditionally, when you build, say you're Intel, and you build a 28 core CPU, well, you're building a 28 core die, but there's always going to be some percentage of those cores which are not going to work, right? So instead of just taking those chips and throwing them out, you may instead turn off four of them and then sell that 28 core chip as a 24 CPU core, right? Which is again, what Apple is doing, right? With some of their M1 chips, they have fewer GPU cores. I guarantee it's because some of those chips were close, but not quite good enough. Yeah. So instead of completely throwing them away, they bend them off. This is very common. Everyone does it across the board, right? Now, this is especially important when it comes to larger chips. So another example here is if you take a look at the graphics card side of the equation. So something like an RTX 3090 versus a 3080 or 3070 or 3060. While yes, they have a wide range of cards, most of these actually boil down to a couple of graphics chips, a couple of the actual GPUs, and then they will then carve out and bend things down. But that's especially important when you get into these very high-end chips, because sure, they can make an M1, which is like eight cores, it's fairly small, but when you start putting 28 cores yeah. on a CPU die, you're gonna just simply have a lot of those CPUs which are not gonna be good, right? I, I want, like, the, the question I'm gonna have is, who's gonna make that one? Is it, is like, cause Apple does not make their own discrete GPUs. Is it gonna be an AMD GPU, which no. is, it's not, is it gonna be an Nvidia Apple. one? Apple, all so, Apple. Here's my, here's my call, right? Put straight down on Wall Street bets. Quote me as of today, whatever day this video is being posted. The way that Apple is going to approach their high end. So I'm going to say that this is specifically for the Mac Pro, although it may also apply for things like the iMac and the 16. We'll, we'll, we'll circle around back to the Mac Pro. Yes. Regardless, I'm thinking like this is the top end, the highest end Mac that you'll be able to buy when they finally completed the transition. 
they're gonna have that 20, 24, 28 core. They're gonna have their top end CPU. There's right? even reports of 128 core GPU. Uh, GPU. But I think that's gonna be separate because here's the thing. Yeah. No matter who you are, no matter how much money you have if you're Apple Inc., there's still limits to the laws of physics. And specifically when it comes to building these chips, the larger the chip, the more likely they're gonna be defects, the smaller the actual rate of return. If you send a whole wafer in and you get one chip out of it, I don't care if you're Apple or not, you're simply not gonna be able to make money throwing out that many, right? Yep. So my thought is they're going to split it up like everyone else in the PC space when you get to the high end, where you're gonna have your CPU, it may have a little bit of stuff, like obviously it'll have a lot of the other things that are built in from the M1, maybe even have a little bit of graphics power, but generally speaking, I assume that it's gonna have a ton of PCI lanes, you're gonna throw in a dedicated Apple graphics card, which is not even that crazy because they not only already developed their own GPUs, right, which are inside the iPhones and inside the M1s, but they also even sell their own dedicated accelerator cards. If you look at the current Mac Pro, it also ships with an optional afterburner card, which is manufactured by Apple. To be fair, that is not a GPU. That is a ASIC, A-S-I-C, and I don't know what that stands for. <laughs> and regardless, it is a specific chip and a specific card that Apple the create and they have sold. That's what they're gonna do. So one of the issues, and I say issues, not really, but issues as you scale to these very large CPUs and everything. So if you look at the M1, that is a full package, right? So everything you need, including the memory, the RAM, yes. is all built into the package, right? Which is part of the reason why you can only get 16 gigs of RAM on these M1 Max. As you start to scale out, some of that is gonna have to be pulled away, right? Some of that, like, I don't assume, especially if they're supporting one and a half terabytes of RAM on the Mac Pro today, you're gonna have to have external memory, right? But and why not have yeah. the graphics cards too? Because it is so much, it makes so much more sense to have a lot of the stuff that's built in, right? So you have your CPU, you have, again, maybe some base level. But that's of where they're getting some of that, that's some of that efficiency mm -hmm. is having it all on the same chip. Again, for stuff like the iMac and the 16 inch MacBook, there may be a hybrid. They may sell something that has external memory, but uh, the GPU is built in, or maybe it has a small GPU, which is right sat beside the chip, or maybe it's a GPU and a CPU and it's on the same chip, but they're two physical dies. So the, the part of these reports along is that there's going to be like a half size mm. Mac Pro. I'm curious, like I'm I'm interested in that, and I'm curious as whether it's half size because it doesn't need to be as large with with heating. You know, it, it, the cooling uh, for for the Mac Pro doesn't have to be as intense. Whether it's half size just because it's meant to be a Mac Semi Pro or yeah, like a more like, entry level yeah option. which maybe only has one or two pci slot mm -hmm. like somewhere in between the mac mini that gives you some of those pro features yeah. but not how many cause how many are in the the mac pro right now i Is don't it, know there's like six or seven PCI yeah it's, slots it's right a now. lot yeah which obviously having that many slots just physically takes up a lot of room sure so that's i'm curious to see if there's just if it's going to be an entirely new product line to mm -hmm. kind of slot in there but i don't know like there's a lot of a benefits to this that there's really no negative sides to any of this especially after what we've seen with the m1 can do a big question going into this and before we saw m1 but even yeah. now can apple build the most powerful computers which has never really been a thing even in the power pc days i mean maybe there are a couple of moments where they were close but like really they never had that full performance leadership but the basic building blocks of what they have are the best in the business, right? The CPU cores that they've developed are incredibly performant, right? I mean, the way that a single CPU core can basically use up all the bandwidth of a system is crazy town, right? These are why these are fast CPUs. They might not clock crazy high, but they take up so little power that it is truly impressive what they've been able to do right out of the gate with the M1X, right? These are, I mean, one M1X core is roughly equivalent to a Ryzen 5000 core, which is already pretty much the best on the desktop. And you're talking about something which is over an order of magnitude less power, right? Yeah. It's very, very impressive. You load this I, up with 28 of these cores, yeah. it is gonna chew through everything. I think there's a real argument that 2021 is the year that we will see multiple Macs ship with the most powerful chips, CPUs, maybe even GPUs, but specifically the most powerful CPUs that you can buy, full stop, the end, no caveats, which is crazy, I guess, unless one caveat, unless you're talking about some crazy server thing, but in like an actual consumer machine. Yeah, which I think they're really, po that's, and that's why like, I, th I agree with you. I think they're poised to do that. I'm just afraid whether they'll pull the trigger on that because you know, there's plenty of times where we've said similar things, but not, not quite that they're gonna make the most powerful CPUs, but like, you know, we said, okay, here's all the things they can do for the next the next MacBook, or here's all the things they can do for the Mac Pros. And then they, they kind of 
they do a very safe rollout of it. Apple is a company which is very complicated, right? Yeah. But one thing that they have had a real track record of is the chip team inside Apple are goddamn rock stars. They blow everyone and everything away. And they have consistently killed the game ever since the Apple A7 came out, right? That was the chip inside the iPhone 5S, where they brought forward 64-bit, which might not sound all that impressive today, but they brought 64-bit literally years before anyone else was even expecting to do so. Everyone scrambled to try to catch up, right? And Apple have had the best processors in any phone ever since the iPhone 5S. Now, they're essentially doing that with the Mac. They have replaced the Intel chips that they used to have with stuff which is better in every possible way. And you can see the clear progression of the M1 is, even though it is a huge step forward, isn't that great. Like, it's very much like they could have put that chip in an iPad and everyone would be like, oh cool, whatever. But because we have it in a Mac and we have the full capability of a real desktop operating system to take a look at, I can so easily see how they scaled this up. On paper, Rosetta 2 sounded borderline magic. And so, I mean, it still does. Yeah, it's, but like to see it firsthand, like, you know, there's so many things that work even better. One of the things that I was like super excited for and then super bummed out immediately was the amount of iOS apps oh. that were available. So like, the you know, when it was pitched, I was like, any iOS app can work on here, which theoretically it can. However, the developers have to turn that on and- Or they need to leave it on because essentially, out of the gate, unless you didn't do anything, the, your app will be available on Mac. Was, but most developers are like, this is gonna suck, turn off. Yeah, so uh, of the apps I use on my phone, the only one that's available is Apollo Reddit. I'm excited to see where they can go with the the, uh, the M1 Xs. I'm and, gonna hit you with a hypothetical. Right? Yeah, let's hit me. Okay, so what happens when, a few months from now, six months, nine months, whatever the case is, the most powerful computer in the world is a Mac. And not only that, maybe not the world. Linus sure Michelle built something better. But something doesn't cost $400,000. What happens when people start switching to Macs because they are more powerful? What happens when people start realizing that these computers have completely owned everyone else and they build such a lead, right? I don't think this is a I, crazy conversation we're having right now. The, the thing that people use power for the most with their CPU is gaming. I can't think of anything else now. <laughs> Which... The, the no, Mac. man, should have all the power though. It's right. <laughs> but I mean, until until developers start saying like, "Oh, I'm gonna start making all these games for games," get out of here. I, but like, not ha no, no. It's all about my final cut. I want my final cut to export videos in three seconds. I want you to see the next episode of yeah. this is four minutes faster than you would have because the M1X Mac exported it I mean, like, in the time it took me to blink yeah, my eye. It benefits us all day long. Every time we talk about Mac. Uh -huh. the, the comment that just comes up is, but I can't game on it. So if you watch our video about what we're looking for in the next gen of consoles, I basically say that every problem that gaming has right now is solved by cloud gaming. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to This Is for more Kanye West references and demonetization. Don't forget to ring a ding, the ding-a-ling button. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. And if you'll excuse us, Matt is going to continue his descent into my beautiful dark twisted fantasy.